Hello and welcome back. My name is Emily and I am so excited to be here with you all. Um, welcome to First Baptist Church Rosenberg's Adult Sunday School Bible Lesson. Um, I am so excited to be here with you today as we talk through this lesson, um, which I think might be one of my favorites. Um, and we are going to be continuing in the Book of Kings. We are in 2 Kings chapter 22, verses 8 through 20. And uh, let's go ahead before we begin, uh, let's start with the word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time that we can come together no matter where we are, no matter where we're watching, Lord. And we have the ability to come together to serve you, to worship you, and to praise you for all the good things you've done. Father, I pray that as we enter into this time of reading your scripture, Father, allow us to have open minds, open hearts, and open ears to your word. Father, we ask that you teach us something new. Help us to um, draw closer to you. Help us to be more like you, Father. And just, um, we thank you for the opportunity to uh, recognize your great power, your great strength, Lord, and to trust in you, Lord, no matter what life um, throws at us, God. We thank you for this time, and it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Well, let's get started. Um, we are going to be again in 2 Kings chapter 22, and the title of this week's message is called God Moves, and it's about how God's Spirit moves with power when His people obey His Word. So to begin with some first thoughts, if you didn't know, the Dead Sea Scrolls were discovered by shepherds in the late 1940s. They found what became recognized as the oldest copies of parts of the Old Testament. Other writings were also found that shed light on life during the times of Jesus. And these scrolls continue to be studied, to be looked at, um, giving new um, uh, interest into examining these truths um, that were found in those manuscripts. So with that being said, let's talk about the context of uh, what we will be reading today. So to start off, um, Josiah, um, he, in his reign, um, initiated significant spiritual reform. Um, and you can find that in 2 Kings, um, the beginning of chapter 22, and in 2 Chronicles um, chapter 34. Some of the things that he did, he uh, commissioned work on the old on the temple to repair damage that had occurred um during the temple repairs um hilkiah the high priest found the book of the law in the temple um and so king josiah heard the words of the scroll he tore his clothes and asked hilkiah to inquire on the lord on the lord behalf of god's people Huldah, um, who was a female uh prophet in jerusalem told Josiah that God's judgment was coming on Judah for the people's persistent sin and worship of other idols. Yet, God would not bring Jerusalem down in Josiah's day. So Josiah uh, made a covenant with the elders of Jerusalem and Judah, told them to follow the Lord, and Josiah commanded Hilkiah to cleanse the temple of all remnants of Baal worship and other idols um, that were being worshipped in that temple. Um, he also reinstituted, um, the Passover celebration. Um, if, if you know, that is a, a very important celebration in, uh, for the Jewish people. And so he, um, reissued that and as a celebration, um, that people had not experienced since the days of judges. So let's go ahead and get into, um, passage uh, we will be reading today. So we're going to go ahead and begin in 2 Kings chapter 22 verse 8. Hilkiah the high priest said to Shaphan the secretary, I have found the book of the law in the temple of the Lord. He gave it to Shaphan who read it. Then Shaphan the secretary went to the king and reported to him, your officials have paid out the money that was in the temple of the Lord and have entrusted it to the workers and supervisors at the temple. Then Shephan, the secretary, informed the king, 
Hilkiah, the priest has given me a book. And Shaphan read from it the presence of the king. So as some context, Josiah's, um, in Josiah's 18th year, he was, uh, when he was 26 years old, he conferred with his high priest through his court secretary. Um, so Josiah, um, as Joseph, as as Joash, who ruled generations earlier, wanted damage to the temple repaired as soon as possible. So Hilkiah was a high priest and he met with Shaphan, the secretary. We may assume that these two meet regularly, um, so Shaphan could be informed um, to Hilkiah um, of uh, temple work that was being done, the progress that they had been made. At any rate, Hilkiah informed Shaphan of a really remarkable discovery. I have found the book of the law in the temple of the Lord. Um, so there is some um, certain interpreters may disagree um, what the expression book of the law have meant. Um, but we see, if you look at uh, 2 Chronicles 34, it states that Hilkiah um, found the book of the law written by the law of Moses. So that kind of shows us that this was probably the book um, that Moses had wrote. Um, so Moses had committed the words of the law to the priest before he died, and he encouraged them to keep a copy of it in God's holy dwelling place, which is a copy that um, Shaphan had found. So Hilkiah gave it to him who read it, and Shaphan immediately went to the king and reported it um, on the progress of God's house and reported the items that they had found. Um, so a couple of things to note. Um, Shaphan, the secretary, went to the king, yes, and reported, um, but he told the king that your officials had paid out the money that was in the temple of the Lord and have entrusted it to the workers and supervisors at the tem temple. Um, so again, and then he also reported that Hilkiah had given him the priest of the book. And uh, Shaphan, you know, we don't know exactly how this conversation had happened, but it's also likely explained the nature of the book to know that this was a very important matter that needed to be discussed and to inform of jo inform Josiah of what had been found. Um, and so Josiah naturally would have been eager to learn of this discovery. And at his request, Shaphan actually read it out aloud to the king. He shared the words of God that apparently had remained hidden from the people for some time. Something that we can learn from these couple of um, verses is that all people should read and study God's word and have that same excitement and eagerness that Josiah had. The Bible says that people who meditate on God's word regularly will find God's blessing and his voice through it. Uh, we can learn who God has called us to be. Indeed, the Bible will guide our path throughout our life. Um, and when we allow the Holy Spirit to take God's word and to shape our lives with it, we become the people that he wants us to be. Let's go ahead and look at verse 11. When the king heard of the words of the book of the law, he tore his robes. Now we're going to stop there. Um, it may sound kind of crazy, but let's talk about what, um, what Josiah had done. Tearing one's clothes um, in this time period actually indicated mourning, um, humility, or deep distress. Uh, if we go back a little bit, Josiah and Caleb, the two faithful spies Moses sent into the promised land, um, tore their clothes in response to the people's unbelief and the, when the other 10 spies brought a bad report. So we've seen this before, and it's not a new thing. Um, even the Apostle Paul and the co-laborer uh, Barnabas also tore their clothes when the people of Lystra thought the two men were gods and tried to worship them. And we can see that you can look at um, look up that in Acts 14. So uh, when Josiah heard the actual words of God from the scroll, he realized how far the people have strayed and have done things their own way and the consequences of their disobedience. And so out of mourning and distress, he tore his clothes. Now let's continue with verse 12 and 13. Verse 12, 
he gave these orders to Hilkiah the priest, Achum son of Shaphan, Akbor son of Micah, Shaphan the secretary, and Asiah the king's attendant. Go and inquire of the Lord for me and all the people and all and for all of Judah about what is written in this book that has been found. Great is the Lord's anger that burns against us because those who have gone before us have not obeyed the words of book. They have not acted in accordance with all that is written there concerning us. So Josiah gathered a group of his trusted officials immediately and um, Hilkiah the high priest is known only from the passage um, and you can look at the other um, report of this account in 2 Chronicles 34. But finding the long lost scroll in the temple was the primary accomplishment for which scripture remembers him. Um, so we see there's a lot of names that are mentioned. Again, these are all people that Josiah had trusted. Um, and what Josiah does is he commands his team to go and inquire of the Lord. The expression inquire of the Lord denotes a careful seeking out of God's specific direction on a matter. Uh, Josiah further directed that inquiring of the Lord uh, would be not just for him, but for all people and all um, all of Judah. And um, he really, Josiah made it such an important task to go and, and to really understand what had been found, what was written, and what the Lord had said, and what their response should be to God. Um, and when he explains this to, to his people, he tells them, great is the Lord's anger that burns against us. So he understands that they were not um, in a good standing with God. They were in deep trouble um, because they did not follow God's law. And um, this is the way that God's word should move us to obedience. When we understand that we have messed up, we have strayed, we have done things our own way, when we, when we understand that we have turned our backs on God's word, it should encourage us to to turn, to repent, and to um, and to obey him, and, and through our faith, we should be obeying his commands. So like the way that Josiah had, um, the way that Josiah, you know, was so eager to change his ways and to figure out what the Lord had wanted from him, is the same way we should respond to God's word. Because um, we, and, and this is the amazing thing, is that God has given us his word for good and our um and our obedience should testify that we believe in his word well let's continue now with verses 14 through 17 let's read hilkiah the priest akam akbor shapan and asiah went to speak to the prophet hulda who was the wife of shalom son of tikva the son of haris keeper of the wardrobe she lived in jerusalem in the new quarter she said to them this is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. Tell the man who sent you to me. This is what the Lord says. I am going to bring disaster on this place and its people. According to everything written in the book, the king of Judah has read. Because they have forsaken me and burned incense to other gods and aroused my anger by all the idols their hands have made, my anger will burn against this place and will not be quenched. So... The king's um, trusted officials um, took what Josiah had ordered them and told them to go out and to figure out what um, what the book of the law meant and, and what they are to do. So they decided to go to Hulda, and she was a prophet um, that lived in Jerusalem. And uh, we see that she is, is mentioned um, also in Second Chronicles uh, chapter 34. Um, so we know that she... Um, was living in Jerusalem and they immediately went to her and um, asked of, you know, what should they say to Josiah um, and what did the Lord want from them? Um, and so when she replies, she affirms that this was a message from God. She affirms that this was um, God's word and that, um, and that they were, they needed to listen to what God had, had said. So, 
Hulda affirmed that God would be fulfilling everything in written in the book uh, the king of Judah had read. And so, uh, and the Lord also affirmed that um, and told them that God had recognized that they have forsaken him, that they have burned incense to other gods, and now anger um, has been made because of the idols that they worshipped. Um, Hulda then proclaimed God's verdict. My anger will burn against this place and will not be quenched. Josiah had used similar expression regarding the kindling of God's wrath in verse 13. Hulda announced God's wrath would not only be kindled, but would, would be a consuming fire. Let's go ahead to verse 18 through 20. Tell the king of Judah, who sent you to inquire of the Lord, this is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says concerning the words you heard. Because your heart was responsive and you humbled yourself before the Lord, you heard what I spoke against this place and its people, that they would become a curse and be laid waste. And because you tore your robes and wept in my presence, I also have heard you, declares the Lord. Therefore, I will gather you to your ancestors and you will be buried in peace. Your eyes will not see all the disaster I'm going to bring on this place. So they took her answer back to the king. So what we see different in this couple of verses is that this, uh, this prophet is now talking to King, um, King Josiah um, directly. Um, she, as, as she says in verse 18, tell to the king of Judah. So she is, this is message. It's not meant for all of the people. It's specifically for the king of Judah. And specifically in this message, um, she reminds Josiah that again, this is from the Lord, the king of Israel. Um, or this is from the Lord, the God of Israel. And Hulda's words um, tell her that this, because of... Um, because of Josiah's urgency, because Josiah had humbled himself um, and and he heard of what the Lord said about its people, um, he did not become proud. He did not become angry. He, in fact, um, wanted to turn to obedience to God. And so because of that, because God had recognized Josiah's obedience. So what we see here is that king, that this prophet told the king of, of Judah, which is Josiah, that um, because he had been humbled and he obeyed God's word, that now he will be, um, he will be not, he will not see the wrath that will be put on Judah. So God issued his verdict regarding um, Josiah through Hulda. Um, I will gather you to your ancestors and you'll be buried in peace. And again, he says that your eyes will not see the disaster. So God, in his mercy and his grace, would extend the kingdom beyond Josiah's day. So Josiah would not suffer by seeing his people defeated, but God gave hope to know that in the future um, that God will stay true to his word um, and will have mercy on the people, um, um, even through his judgment. So what we see here, and I think it's amazing to know that God is true to his word. But through his word, through God recognizing of um, this land, these people's behavior, he continued to extend grace and judgment. Um, God was gracious and compassionate to his people, uh, but he wouldn't tolerate their sin because he loved them so much. So after Josiah, four more kings of Judah reigned, all of whom who did um, evil in God's sight. But under Zedekiah, Judah's last king, Jerusalem fell and the people were taken into exile. Josiah did not witness the disaster that fell on God's people, but his successors did. God still moves today. The Bible assures us that we can count on God's promises through Jesus Christ. Jesus affirmed that he came so that we might live in abundance. The Bible also affirms that it is so important and to know about Jesus. It is essential to know that we are dead in our sins, but Christ, through his blood and through his sacrifice, have made us whole. 
the consistent testimony of scripture is shows us that God is gracious, um, that through humility and through repentance, um, those are the things that move God's heart. God's spirit also moves with power when his people obey his word. Um, because our obedience shows us that we have faith and that we have trust in the Lord. So God used Josiah to do many good things in Judah because Josiah's heart was softened, um, was soft towards God, and God had blessed him through his obedience and through his faith. Um, so I think that is such a wonderful message to learn for this week, to know that um, let us be more like Josiah, to understand the times that we have failed, that we have messed up, uh, but when we act in faith, when we repent, when we turn to God, um, he can do amazing things with us and with our life. So thank you so much um, for joining me today. It was a great uh, pleasure to be able to read through this passage with you. Uh, may God bless you. Um, and thank you so much and have a wonderful day.